Good afternoon, this is Inside Look. I'm Neil Mercado. Earlier this week, the battered body of Adamson University student John Matthew Salilig was found in a shallow grave in Imus, Cavite. The young student allegedly died following a hazing incident during the welcoming rites of his fraternity, Tao Gamma Phi. Police said they are preparing to file criminal charges against 17 Tao Gamma members based on witness testimonies. For his part, President Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. said that justice will be served as he stressed that there should be no room for violence in student organizations. To discuss this and other issues, joining us today on Inside Look is Senator Risa Ontivero. Senator, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Neil. Mm -hmm. Senator, uh, let's cut to the chase. We have the anti-hazing law in place right now. Yet here we are once again, another death allegedly due to hazing. It hasn't been a while since the death of Acho Castillo III, who also died during a hazing activity in 2017. And Senator, I was watching the news uh, earlier today and uh, the hearing on the case of Acho Castillo is still ongoing. So what happened here? Why do these deaths keep on happening despite having the anti-hazing law in place? Well, apparently, Neil, we have to uh, work harder to fully implement the anti-hazing law dito lang sa kaso ni John Matthew Salilig. Mm -hmm. Tataos puso akong nakikiramay sa kanyang pamilya at sa buong Adamson University community. Uh, kung saan yung late husband ko ay naging undergrad engineering student. Mm -hmm. no, ang tangka nilang panawagan para sa hustisya kay John Matthew. So just in his case, again, the full force of the anti-hazing law should be brought down upon the perpetrators, including those uh, who had knowledge of the crime. Mm -hmm. But it really appears that we have to go even beyond that so that pwedeng mangyari yung vision natin. Na. And no ifs and buts about it, hazing simply has no place mm -hmm. uh, in our society. Of course, while exclusive fraternities, uh, organizations like fraternities and sororities are not illegal at maraming mm -hmm. mga bimbro nila ay mga law-abiding citizens, we should never tolerate violence and criminality, uh, including of this sort. So we need to proactively implement the anti-hazing law and also other regulations so that we can ensure that our schools, our universities, hindi magiging at mananatiling havens para sa hazing at sa iba pang mga mararahas at sa regressive uh, na activities. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree with you, Senator. There, we have this right to organize. So, uh, uh, hindi talaga illegal uh, based on law itong uh, mga student organizations, including fraternities. Uh, but where is the problem here, Senator? Is it the law itself? Are the penalties not enough? Is it uh, an issue of implementation? Or is it a problem with the law or a problem in the culture of these fraternities? Well, there you go, uh, Neil. No? Nasa kultura din natin at hindi lang ng mga fraternities at sororities, kundi sa buong lipunan natin. Uh, even we legislators often say na marami na tayong mga batas, marami dito ay magagandang batas, but the proof of the pudding is always in the eating or in the mm -hmm. implementation. So uh, this is another though very tragic case, uh, a situation where the law is put to the test again, gaanong kahusay mm -hmm. ito ipatutupad, including in terms of exacting accountability. But beyond fraternities and sororities, apparently there is still a culture of violence. Uh, mm -hmm. We still have the unfinished cases of the uh, martial law, dictatorship, mm -hmm. human rights violations victims. More recently, the extrajudicial killings, uh, widows and orphans still also waiting for justice. So the question when we look at tragedies like this uh, in the Salilig family, we have to ask in each of our own families and homes, in our schools, in our workplaces, in all social institutions, kino-confront ba natin uh, itong seeming tolerance or even acceptance natin ng karahasan, whether as a means of so-called initiation. Sabi nga nung iba, ano ba yan? It was supposed to be a welcoming activity daw. Dahil si John Matthew daw ay miyembro na ng ibang chapter ng fraternity sa Sambuanga, if I remember correctly. How could uh, any fraternal organization punish one of its members with, sabi, not less than 70 paddles? No? Saan nagmumula? At hindi lang na we should not end the search and the correction 
within fraternities and sororities, but ask that question in all our social institutions, where we socialize uh, our children, our young people, uh, kung saan uh, tinatakda natin yung mga norms sa ating lipunan bilang mga mamamayan. Mm-hmm. Um, Senator, I want to talk about the institutions we have, including the schools. As you know, uh, Mr. Salilig is a uh, student of Adamson University. Ano, Senator, yung role at uh, how can schools make sure that these things do not happen uh, under their jurisdiction? Well, more and more schools have included in their uh, student manuals yung mga rights and responsibilities na mga student organizations and I'm mm-hmm. sure dapat papasok sa ilalim ng mga prinsipyo iyon pati itong mga fraternities at sorority so it's the school's duty to set the norms to oversee that these are observed and not in the breach tulad sa ganitong kaso ng karahasan at pagpatay pa and it is also the responsibility of student organizations the large majority of which I believe are uh, abiding by them to abide by these rules and regulations. At hindi dapat uh, mas mababa ang uh, responsibilidad dito ng mga fraternities at sororities, especially in conducting their so-called initiation activities. Mm-hmm. So, Senator, how do we fix this? I guess that's the question really here. How do we make, how do we make sure that uh, this, not, this, this does not happen again? And uh, I would like to ask you, Senator, in your personal opinion, do you think na yung current version ng ating anti-hazing law, is it enough? Perhaps it is enough in letter, in the letter and spirit. Kailangan, it's again put to the test in this case in terms of the implementation at nakikiisa ako din sa Castillo family sa kanilang matagal na at masakit na paghintay ng hustisya mula sa ating uh, judicial system. Of course, all laws, any laws are open for future evaluation and amendment. Uh, I remember Senate President Mig spoke very strongly being uh, the principal author and sponsor of this bill when we passed it. He really called for its full implementation and I'm sure any of us legislators ay magiging bukas kung kailangan pa itong patuloy na uh, pagandahin, pahusayin, especially in the light of uh, more recent experiences such as this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, itong ang hearings dito sa kaso ng kay Acho Castillo is still ongoing, Senator. Ano? And... Um, Will the Senate look into this incident similar to the hearings conducted uh, by the upper chamber on the Castillo case? Well, the uh, recent privileged speech of the Senate President on this very case was referred to the committee, so it may be scheduled and soon uh, for a hearing. Mm-hmm. My last uh, question on this topic, uh, Senator. Uh, itong kay Acho Castillo, the hearing is still ongoing, so it can be said that it's not just a matter of the law and the implementation mm-hmm. of the law. It's also a matter, there's a bigger story here, which is the Philippine justice system. It's been more than five years since the Castillo case happened. So what can we do to fix this, Senator? Because that may be one of the reasons why these things continue on happening, the slow justice system here in our country. I think you're right, Neil. And in fact, sinasabi nga, diba, that the real deterrent is not any particular, even harsh punishment, but the certainty of arrest, mm-hmm. prosecution, and if found guilty conviction. So tama ka. Uh, there's also uh, a great responsibility in the hands of the judiciary not to be an example of that old saying that justice delayed is justice denied. So we legislators are charged to oversee the full and proper implementation of the law. And of course, the uh, one of the other separate and co-equal branches of government is uh, charged to mm-hmm. deliver justice to those who seek redress. Uh, through the courts. Uh-huh. Senator, let me go to another topic. You recently exposed what you called a government-sponsored sugar smuggling scandal. For context for our viewers, Senator, you said that imported sugar already arrived in the Philippines even before the publication of Sugar Order Number no. 6, which That's allowed the importation of refined sugar. Now, the Department of Agriculture has paved the way for the release of the imported mm-hmm. refined sugar, including those that had already arrived here in our country even before the import order. So, what do you make of this? Well, uh, what I make of that, Neil, is that by paving the way or trying to pave the way for the release of the bulk of that apparently smuggled sugar, um, senior DA Senior Yusek 
panganiban has provided the smoking gun uh, mm -hmm. on this case. It's right there in black and white sa kanilang memo na alam nilang may mga asukal na dumating bago pa ang takdang petsa na naaayon sa sugar order. So huling-huli, kumbaga straight from the horse's mouth or that other saying that a fish is caught by its mouth. In his February 27th memo, Yusek Panganiban, mismo nagsabi sila, you may now issue SRA clearance mm -hmm. to all Asian counter trade, Sukden Philippines, and Edison Lee marketing. And here's the kicker, ha, Neil. He further said, included in the aforesaid imported sugar are the shipments consigned to all Asian counter trade, which have arrived in the country. A memo dated February 27th, referring to sugar shipments that could or should not have arrived in the country earlier than March 1, just yesterday. And again, sa ganitong karaming supply uh, na pagpasok sa merkado, malawak ang agricultural smuggling na ito. Economic sabotage ang epekto mm -hmm. because it won't truly bring down the price if what is happening here is the formation of a new cartel made up of favored importers. Uh, dapat yan ay may sugar order. Ang anumang kung legit importation ito, any such should have a sugar order from the Sugar Regulatory Administration as provided by law. So basically, without the sugar order, it's illegal. At yung supply, mm -hmm. yung asuka na yan, those are smuggled sugar. And kung tatlong kumpanya lang talaga ang makikinabang at kukontrol sa supply ng asukal sa bansa, eh, mistula talagang nagbubuo sila ng cartel. Ang matindi pa dyan, it appears that government itself is party to choosing those three favored ones. Government itself, halos nag-facilitate niyang uh, tatlong makakakuha ng supply. And sa ganyang kalakaran, Neil, walang ibang mangyayari kundi kickbackan pa rin, kontratahan, katiwalian. And sa huli, as I mentioned earlier, hindi rin bababa ang presyo. So in the end, talo na naman yung mga consumers natin. At ang pinakamasakit, it would seem that DA itself is the organizer of this emerging cartel. Mm -hmm. So, Senator, should this indeed be a case of government-backed smuggling, how can we make sure that someone will be held accountable for this? And uh, frankly speaking, Senator, mm -hmm. how likely is it that someone will be held accountable, especially this falls under the jurisdiction of the Department of Agriculture, which is cur mm -hmm. currently headed by the President? Yes, and he himself was mentioned by Yusek Panganiban. So, wow, uh, hindi lang ang uh, ES ang itinuro through a memo which Yusek Panganiban said he interpreted as uh, being akin or equal to a sugar order. That's an outright violation of the law and the charter of the SRA. How likely is it that uh, all these questions will be settled satisfactorily? Well, na file na rin or na refer na rin yung aking Senate Resolution Number 497 mm -hmm. to the Blue Ribbon Committee. Mm -hmm. So, uh, iniintay ko na lang at follow up namin na matakda na ng chair Yung hearing, it's rather urgent. Uh, Neil, we need to answer the questions about the accountability of Yusek Panganiban. Clarify if there is really any accountability on the mm -hmm. part of the ES. I mean, may papel ba talaga ang ES sa importation? Is there really any accountability uh, on the part of the president? And then on the private sector side, well, ngayon pa lang, nananawagan ako na if it be proven, that uh, all Asian counter trade, Sukden Philippines, and Edison B marketing are involved uh, in this smuggling, uh, economic sabotage, and the uh, early stages of forming a cartel, then they should be blacklisted. Mm -hmm. So, Senator, uh, let's talk about that resolution that you filed mm -hmm. regarding uh, this. Uh, nakausap niyo na po ba si Senator Francis Tolentino who chairs mm -hmm. the uh, Blue Ribbon Committee regarding this? Will the Senate discuss this? Because the question here right now is, we have this expose of yours. The question now is, where do we begin? We really need to begin in our own backyard here in the Senate where we regularly file resolutions and as are stated there, in aid of legislation. So, I am... Uh, hopeful that uh, Chair uh, Francis will schedule the hearing soonest. I'll be following him up about this uh, in these days. Kasi nga, may, may pagka-urgent. Uh, meron na daw na offload na 6,000 of the 
metric tons of the 450,000 at the port of Batangas. May nakaabang kasi sa simula, tatlong barko daw, tatlong shippers. But uh, the balance that is still there, I mean, the Bureau of Customs should have no confusion about this. Those are really potentially smuggled sugar and I intend that we be we do our best to prove this in the Blue Ribbon Committee. Kapag ka smuggled yan, Neil, there's no next step but for BOC to confiscate that supply and not allow it to reach uh -huh. the market and make the targeted uh, fat profit margin for these three uh, favored uh, importers is an emerging cartel, is to be asked, and their cohorts in government. Mm -hmm. uh, you're watching Inside Look. We'll just take a quick break. We'll have more discussions with Senator Risa Ontiveros when we return. Please stay with us. Tao po, tao po. Tao po. Ano po? Pera pong walis. Salamat. During the lockdown, naisipan ko na sana bata na lang ako ulit. Sana yung panahon daan na lang ako ulit para wala akong problema. Doon pumasok sa akin ng tema ng barong-barong. Kasi kung doon yung po natatanong, batang release po ako. So, lumak po ako sa karatong bahay at karatong klase ng pamumuhay. Parang yung yara to, mga tol. Ayan o. Oh. Diba, may tunog? Yaro talaga to. Sa pagbuo ng diorama, para ka namin talagang buo-buo ng totoong bahay. Uunahan mo yung poste, yung mga biga, matinding pagtsatsaga po ang kailangan sa pagbuo ng diorama. Almost a month po, depende po sa project yung binubuo natin. Someday, magiging replica na lang ito nung nakaraan. Mawawala na yung ganitong klaseng bahay sa Pilipinas. At ang mga new generation na Pilipino, makikita na lang po nila ito sa mga museyo. At masasabi na na, ah, ito pala yung barong-barong. Ito pala yung Pilipinas noon. Umaasa ako, someday magiging maayos yung bansa. You're watching Inside Look with us today, Senator Risa Ontivero. Senator, let me go to another topic. Let's talk about uh, the PUB, PUV uh, modernization. The LTFRB has extended the franchise of traditional jeepneys to December 31. What's your comment on this? Well, uh, I'm sure it's a welcome move uh, on the part of the jeepney drivers and operators na apektado nitong PUV modernization program. But the question still begs to be asked, Neil, um, is the deadline move to December 31 still setting a sufficient and realistic uh, timeline mm -hmm. to achieve the objectives of PUV uh, modernization? I doubt if it's enough time. And if, if I'm correct, what's the realistic timetable for all of these uh, issues and concerns to be addressed uh, and hopefully resolved uh, to the satisfaction of most, if not everyone, concerned? Mm -hmm. uh, Senator, there will be a hearing today on this over there at the Senate. Uh, what is your biggest question going to be in this hearing? Well, I'll begin with the premise, Neil, that uh, wala namang kontra sa modernization per se. However, the implementation of the modernization mm -hmm. program, and this is where the questions will arise, might mm -hmm. put livelihoods at risk and even lead to serious economic dislocation from an 
already marginalized sector. Marginalized na sila economically, lalo mm-hmm. pang marginalized nitong pandemya. And then ito, uh, ostensibly a positive program, unintentionally, baka maging lalong dagdag na dagok sa kanila. Plus, Neil, it has to be said, the jeepney is a cultural icon of mm-hmm. the Philippine road. Uh, there may mm-hmm. be a way to modernize it, make it more environmentally friendly, even more efficient, na hindi kailangan baguhin yung look niya. No? Mm-hmm. Uh, according to official records, this is a problem also of, of large scale. A large scale, 250,000 jeepneys in the country, 55,000 sa Metro Manila lamang. At yung totoong bilang nga ay maaring mas mataas pa. So, a third important question is, what are the social safety nets in place for the drivers and mm-hmm. operators? Um, nabagit ko kanina, economically marginalized na sila. Hindi rin mura yung modernization program. Mm-hmm. Sila, right? Actually, Senator, it's a good point mm-hmm. that you're raising that because yeah. that really is the concern of mm-hmm. our drivers right now. Right. Yun yung unang-unang inaaray nila. Uh, mm-hmm. One of the main objections from their end is really the cost of the new units, mm-hmm. around 24 to 2.8 million, e eh, kumpara sa traditional jeepney sa ngayon na 200 to 600,000 pesos lang. So, uh, quadruple or almost quintuple yung kailangan nilang uh, kumpuniin para pumasok sa modernization program. And then, so kanina na pag uusapan natin yung supply of jeepneys, mm-hmm. eh, yung demand, ilan ba talaga ang pasahero sa Metro Manila? And then, alongside that, considering the impending five-year suspension of the Philippine National Railways operations, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. May, sapat, may sasapat ba tayong transport capacity sa NCR to meet projected demand? Lalo na't lumuluwag na tayo pa- paahon sa pandemya and uh, we really want to go into setting up a new economic normal uh, coming from uh, this recession. Uh, a fourth mm-hmm. question yet is, well, yun, yung pinag-usapan natin una, no? yung timetable. Uh, how much time really do we need to implement the PUD modernization with the full and proper participation and satisfactory participation of all the stakeholders? Baka hindi sasapat yung siyam na buwan ngayon na natitira uh, para dyan. And then the mode of uh, entering the modernization program, itong cooperatives. I mean, Ako, sumusuporta talaga ako sa mga kooperatiba. So I need to ask, is it realistic to assume that the newly organized cooperatives, kasi obligado itong ating mga kababayang jeepney driver, magbuo muna ng kooperatiba bago makapasok sa modernization, will they uh, adequately be able to amortize the loans they'll need to take out to uh, acquire their modernized fleets? Uh, hindi simple proseso as it turns out eh. Uh, cooperatives are har- having a hard time obtaining financing from the Land Bank of the Philippines and the Development Bank of the Philippines dahil sa mga mukhang humihigpit na requirements na ipinapapatupad ng mga banko. So, kung government program na rin lang naman ito uh, by the DOTR, the government make things easier for the cooperatives on the bank side. Uh, and last but not the least that I'll be raising in a few minutes Neil, uh, is regards an advocacy na mula pa nung simula ng pandemia, sinusulong mm-hmm. na ng mga buong public transport uh, drivers and operators, service contracting. So kahit dito sa PUV modernization, sa jeepneys, service contracting should be made integral uh, to the PUV modernization program. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Senator, let me ask you this. Uh, in your personal opinion, would you say na uh, hilaw pa? itong planong uh, PUV modernization program ng gobyerno? I guess in broad strokes, medyo nahihinog na siya dahil dumaan na rin yung uh, ilang mga taon. Pero yung implementasyon, maya't maya, uh, really hits a snag. And some of these, in fairness to our jeepney drivers and operators, ilang ulit na rin nilang sinabi na uh, yung iba sa kanila gusto namang magbuo ng transport co-ops, pero yung iba, ayaw. For them, it is not the optimal mode of uh, plying the routes and uh, carrying out their livelihood. So, kailangan ba talagang piliting mag-cooperativize? Mm-hmm. 
then if we uh, overcome that first challenge or hurdle, sige, kung magko-cooperativize sila, hindi ba dapat may assistance talaga mula sa gobyerno para ma-finance nila yung pagpasok sa PUV modernization program. Uh-huh. Yun na nga, pwede bang wag nang dagdagan or babawasan pa ba yung requirements um, for the bank loan? Can government e- in fact even uh, take up a portion, a bigger portion of the cost? Sa ngayon kasi may subsidy of about 160,000 uh-huh. pesos. Uh, kulang pa nga yan para makabili. Is that enough though? That is for another discussion. Right, right. It's even mm-hmm. less than the minimum 200,000 you need for a traditional jeepney, let alone yung maximum na 2.8 million. Uh, halos less than, um, a, a little more, th- oh my gosh, a little more than 5%, but I'm just trying to compute in my mind. Uh, <laughs> what What is needed uh, to to uh, modernize the jeepney? Tapos, kapag modernize na talaga ito, if we've uh, taken those steps, overcome those hurdles, Uh, kailangan ba talagang palitan yung pagbumukha ng ating jeepney? Hindi ba pwedeng i-retain yung mm-hmm. look niya while internally making it more environmentally friendly and efficient? Mm-hmm. So my final question on this, Senator, is how do we find that balance? Because one of the goals of the PUV modernization program is to promote the use of more environment-friendly fuels. So how do we come up with a good balance between protecting the environment while at the same time, we protect the welfare of our drivers. I think, Neil, yung mga jeepney drivers at operators natin, kasabay nung pagprotekta sa kabuhayan nila, have said time and again, gustong gusto din nilang makiisa sa pagprotekta sa kalikasan at sa, sa physical environment din natin. Kaya't sana talagang uh, mas pakinggan sila at isama ng gobyerno sa proseso nito. Hear them out put as many of their proposals as possible into the final PUV modernization plan. Dahil sa huli, uh, sila naman ay nananatiling pangunahing stakeholder. Uh, they, our commuters who want and deserve uh, environmentally friendly, efficient, and um, uh, affordable uh, public transportation in our cities and in our rural areas. And of course, there is Uh, government itself. So, wag, uh, wag natin pong ituring na second-class citizen ang ating mga jeepney drivers and operators mismo sa modernization program na pangunahing hinihingi yung kanilang partisipasyon. Uh, Senator Reese, I want to talk about the SOGI bill. Marami mm-hmm. nag-aantay dito ngayon. What's the update there at the Senate? Uh, we all saw what happened in the Senate, and it's now in the Committee of Rules. So have you spoken with Senator Joel Villanueva about how he intends to move forward with this measure? Well, I'll continue following up the Majority Leader, Neil, about scheduling that meeting uh, of the Senate Committee on Rules uh, para mapag-desisyon na nito yung issue nga. Uh, kung ibabalik ba, i ba sa Committee on Women, which I chair, yung SOGI Equality Bill, which in fairness to the committee, sa nakaraang uh, dalawang putatlong taon na may file at may re refile na anti-discrimination bill, SOGI Equality Bill, laging ang Committee on Women dito sa Senado ang nag-aalaga dyan. Uh, I will be reaching out again to each and every one of my colleagues to please support uh, my appeal to the Committee on Rules that uh, the bill be placed back uh, in the custody of the Committee on Women para maisulong na po namin harinawa sa sponsorship hanggang sa period of interpolation muli and perhaps for the first time in its history hanggang mm-hmm. sa period of amendments and voting. Mm-hmm. Dahil sa uh, House of Representatives, they've mm-hmm. done it before. They have passed it. And yes. actually, Congresswoman Geraldine Roman was our mm-hmm. guest a couple of weeks ago to ah, talk about really? the SOGI bill. And she was mm-hmm. fairly confident that the SOGI bill will be passed in the House. Given these res- uh, recent developments in the Senate, what are the odds that the SOGI bill will be passed by Senators? Senator Risa? The odds have uh, not always been in our favor. And today, I can't say yet that they are in our favor. Pero... Mm-hmm. Ang LGBTQIA plus community mismo ni minsan hindi bumibitaw dito. So, how can we allies do any less? At magkaisa kami ni Rep. Jerry. Uh, you know, she's really uh, holding on to hope. And I stand with her 
mula naman dito sa Senado. It's simply a bill whose time has not only come, but is uh, long past due. At kahit yung mga surveys ng ating mga kababayan would show that the majority of the respondents favor a SOGI Equality Bill, mm-hmm. favor a an anti-discrimination bill uh, particular to SOGI. So maybe it's time that we in the Senate and the whole Congress catch up with the hearts and minds of our people. Mm-hmm. Senator Risa, I asked this question to Congresswoman Geraldine Roman. I want to ask you the same question. A lot of people are saying that they do not want to discriminate against the LGBT community, but the same people would also oppose the SOGI bill. So what do you make of this? Is the Philippines really in a state of acceptance of the LGBT community or is it mere tolerance? Because those two are very different. <laughs> that is true. And uh, parang ang may disconnect diba, between... Uh, survey results like I just mentioned at saka yung uh, hilig nating mga Pilipinong sabihin that we are a very open society, we are inclusive, uh, we accept or some would say at least we tolerate what the word, ano, we tolerate the LGBTQIA plus community. But so why is it that when it comes to a final and most important threshold of putting those protections against discrimination against inequality, no new rights, no special rights, simple yung parehong uh, rights and welfare ng bawat tao at bawat mamamayan dito sa Pilipinas. Why do we stop short? I think um, we, I cannot guess about uh, other institutions or other parts of our society. I can only speak for uh, the Senate, which is my home mm-hmm. institution, na really it's time for us uh, to catch up. And uh, alam ko na yung ibang mga importanteng social institutions natin, uh, ang ating mga pamilya, ang ating mga eskwelahan, ang ating mga workplaces, and many others, kayo rin sa media, are doing everything we can or doing a lot that we can to mm-hmm. also uphold SOGI equality uh, in our own spaces. At sana kami rin sa Senado, kompletuhin na namin yung proseso to from our mm-hmm. end, really make the whole of society a safe space for every Filipino, regardless of our soji. Mm-hmm. On that note, thank you so much, Senator Risa Ontiveros. We appreciate giving us your time. Very welcome. Mm-hmm. Sana ma-invite po ulit namin kayo soon. Uh, that has been your Inside Look, our nightly newscast. Inquirer today airs live on weekdays, 6 p.m. on Inquirer.net's online channels. Follow Inquirer.net on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Reddit. For more stories, visit Inquirer.net. Good afternoon.